Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video where you see we're at a very very rainy Rye House. Obviously the last time we were at a very rainy Rye House we were doing our XPK but today we're here for something a bit different. We're with ADX once again, they've uh, invited me down once again. They've got a massive team now. So the last time we've seen ADX is when they invited me down to drive the senior Rotax. Now they've just got a full race team, we've got the full works, full works team. Um, yeah, it's great to see them grow from January to, uh, to December now when we're filming. Um, but what we are here for is try and start to play JCB Karting Pro Kart Championship. Um, so we're down here to test the JCB kart itself. Um, it's a two, it's a twin 225cc powered uh, pro kart. So yeah, so 450 cc's all together over the normal, say 400 cc or the 160, say the 160s that the IHPK use or the 200s that BVEC use. So 225. Um, and yeah, it's basically using a biz chassis, a biz rental chassis. Um, so it's an interesting mix of um, engine and chassis. Yeah, down here to test what it can do, what it's like to drive, uh, test a few setups on it. Um, as you can see, it's very friendly in a minute. Um, so yeah, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. But yeah, let's um, let's get on track for the first time. Let's see how, what it's like to drive. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it. And as we leave the pits then, it's going to catch me now almost straight away as we get a nice big lock of oversteer and then coming into stadium we get a nice bit of understeer. The car is not just doesn't seem to want to turn at all. Um, it's down to a couple of things, down to setups, also down to the fact that as you can tell the car, uh, the track sorry, is quite damp and greasy. It's not as wet as it was in the intro as we did record that after the session. But yeah, it's, um, it's still quite damp, greasy and very green out there. So at the minute there is currently no grip, even the road taxes are out there, uh, wasn't really finding that much grip at all. But like I say here, just giving it a big chunk of right turn, but the car just does not want to turn at all. Like I said in the intro, this is basically, a, it's a biz rental chassis strapped to two 225 engines. So it's like a rental slash race car hybrid, which is really interesting to drive. Um, it does feel very heavy at the back. Um, like I say, car feels, it's very understeer as you can tell. But if we catch up to the BRM race pro car, which is also out, they do a little spin then in the second half and we do manage to get past it and coming into pylon and you can just tell i'm just trying to turn it left and use them curves but for whatever reason the car is just not responding at all and even once you've turned it you get a nice snap of oversteer so the setup's quite a bit funky at the minute but we do manage to outpace the pro the brm pro car that was currently out again that could just be the driver issue etc etc but we'll let the road taxes pass then, which is also out on track, and even get a cheeky overtake on a road tax, even though I'm pretty sure they just come out of the pits, so I'm not going to claim that one. But let's try go for a full lap then in the JCB. We're coming through to the start finish and coming into stadium, absolutely nowhere near the apex where we should be, as the car just does not want to turn in. But we do eventually get it turned in and nicely use the curb there. Coming around the left hander, coming into hairpin one, brake just at that mark there where the, the um, tarmac changes 
and just completely missed the apex of hairpin one. Coming to hairpin two then, we're going to stick into the middle of the track again, a bit more on the right hand side is preferable, but we are going to use all the track on the left hand side there. Coming into pylon, we're going to really use all the kerb which is nice and we want to use this kerb here on the right hand side, the white kerb. We don't quite get there into the last couple of corners then again we're just completely missing the apexes because the car just does not want to turn but we use all the track on the exit to try and get as much speed as we can coming into the first corner and that is a 48.93 i say it wasn't the best time at all but say the temperature's starting to get in the tires now and you can see ahead we've also got that brm race car that is also out so when we speed the footage up a little bit we do manage to catch up to it and that's what we want to do we want to try and use that white curve just there Coming into the two hairpins again. Sorry, the final two corners again. Using, well, using the curve on the first one, but not the second one. And coming down the main straight then, start to catch up to it. But like I say, when they lift the stadium, we're just going to put our car on the inside to get it done and try not understeer into them. at the end of the first session and there's the checkered flag wave trying to get a bit of human DRS to try and get the quicker time but we don't get a quicker time bring it in to tell Zach about the setup issues just to try and alter it fucking hell I've about died about a thousand times out there there's no grip on these fuckers at all what is it? <laughs> Jesus there's no temperature you know, every body like pop them up pop them up so yeah, we start altering the setup a little bit just to try and get any sort of temperature into the tyres or try and get the car to respond a bit better. Zach does go four seconds quicker in the session he was out in. While he was out, the BRM Pro Car was also ready to go and quickly getting the mechanics to get the engine started to get me out. And getting quite oversteer then coming out of the pits. As you can tell, quite tell, the track is still quite greasy and damp coming into stadium just get a feel for where the grip is just trying to see how much the car is wants to turn and like i say how oversteer it's going to get the setup probably still ain't dialed in either as it's still a brand new car for adx as well as the jcb so setups still need to be properly dialed in which is well, one of the reasons why we are down here but this session is going to get cut short very quickly as we come around here pin two And yeah, as you can hear, one of the engines is just not working as one of the chains has just come completely stripped itself off coming around hairpin too. So yeah, just bringing it into the pits. So if I look down there, you can just see the clutch is just spinning and yeah, it's obviously attached to absolutely nothing. So give it to the mechanics over lunch time as they get the sprocket off and put a brand new chain on. And you can really see now that the rain is absolutely pouring down while they're also working on the road taxes as well. But the mechanics get it all set up nicely and time effectively, so we are gonna get a good session then in the rain. Just look how wet it's come down after lunch. And yeah, we've got the wet on luckily, so once again, coming into stadiums, having a good feel for where the grip is. I still haven't properly driven this car yet, so just understanding what I need to give the car, what inputs I need to give to it to so just to let it go around the corner so i'm still used to the jcb understeering machine and yeah so it's still quite understeering here anyways you can sort of see i know the rain isn't really helping but ah, it's getting a nice a lock of oversteer as well yeah like i said the setup's probably not properly dialed in quite so yeah it's still on the same setup that it was on during the dry-ish session at the start but as you can see here the rain is catching people out someone's obviously gone over the puddle in the in the start finish straight if you don't really know right house in the wet when it does get really really wet there's a nice puddle that gets uh, generated at that start finish and it can catch quite a few people out and as you can see there's quite a few puddles around even this first corner as well but one of the brm road taxes then they get overtaken by that and you can just see the power that that just generates look at that it's absolutely ballistic and I believe you said we're running the Yokohama wet tyres and I say I'm pretty sure that the road taxes are running a different set of wet tyres. Coming around, coming up to hairpin 2 then, it's also going to catch me out here as well as we come round, get a bit over here, try and let off 
and the cart just almost wants to spin round. The engines actually were idling quite high as I found out. Yeah, couldn't really let off at all as it, it sort of want, still wanted to go, still had a little bit of accelerator still on. So coming around that corner, got a bit oversteery and yeah, just couldn't quite get the, uh, couldn't quite let off to let the, to let the car, you know, sort itself out. And with that end of the 15 minute session then, we come into the pitch just to let the mechanics know about the uh, high idling. Engine's still idling really high, downside balance rate. Feels like it's idling really high, so when you go around the corner it feels like the throttle's pulled up. Pull it on the uh, trolley and start the engine. I think it is the idling. Yeah, pull it on the throttle. Yeah, so just to let them know about the high idling. Um, and yeah, so Zach's, it's Zach's go next anyway. So get it up on a trolley just to sort it out. And uh, once Zach had his go in here, it was back out for my session then. As you can see, the clouds have disappeared a little bit. We have got a nice bit of sun that's shining down on Rye House. As you can tell, the track is still very, very wet out there. So this time now, with the engines now sorted out, we're going to try and push the car a little bit further than we are. We're going to be trying and getting the right lines that we should be taking. Uh, still on the same setup wise, so nothing on the chassis has been changed from earlier. So at the minute, it's just going to be understanding what I want from, well, what the car wants from me. As you can see here, we're starting to use the inside of the curbs and what we should be doing to get that car rotated around and down the main straight. There's no big puddle anymore, so we can use that left-hand side nicely and going into the stadium then trying to use that curb, but not quite getting on it. And as you can see on the left there, we've got Matt Easy out on the JCB machine and he's coming really slowly and I was trying to figure out why he was and uh, we're about to find out. So here we go then, out in the JCB machine, coming up to the stadium and there is just absolutely nothing happening with a full lot of right on. Are you coming up to the second bit of the stadium once again? I'm trying to turn right but nothing is happening at all. I now understand why Hannah and Matt were um, struggling in this car going through even there. So much left hand lock but nothing's happening. Got to hairpin one then, again a full load of lock, but absolutely nothing happening. It was quite funny to drive, I cannot lie. And coming up to hairpin at two, are we going to have the same problem? Of course we are. A whole lot of right and there's nothing's happening, it's just not turning at all in these conditions on slicks. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So from the outside perspective, you can just see how slow I'm going around corners. Even coming up to stadium for the second time after coming down the straight is just scaring the life out of me. You're coming down at a load of speed and it just does not want to turn. You're basically going into the barrier. And the one thing here I was worried about is with all these road taxes out in the BRM Pro Cart, because I'm so slow out there, you know, you can be quite getting in the way. Um, like I say, if you're not really paying attention to what's behind you, you can, say, probably even run into one. Like I said, just not getting any turning at all. And even here, again, there's no turn, no turn, no turn. Get a bit of oversteer though, it's just trying to learn as well, like, what I need to get from the car. Like, at points I was like, do I need to brake to rotate it? Even though it's turning left, they're letting that Rotax go through, I'm still just turning left, I can't do anything about it. And even here, I didn't see on the right, left-hand side there, just, yeah, the Rotax coming through. But like I said, that's sort of one of the things I'm trying to say is, like, you know, how dangerous having this out with all these quick carts out at the same time is. Uh, luckily, there weren't as many Rotaxes as there probably could be. 
Plus, this could be pretty dangerous indeed. But we're trying to out drag the BRM Pro Car, and we're going to come to the corner. So break really early, turning right, and here's where the meme happens. Turning right, turning right, turning right, straight into a barrier. Nothing I could have done about that at all. Probably just break and just not, not go. But yeah, there's me binning the JCB. I think that was the slowest crash I've ever seen. <laughs> I just, yeah. Like I said, it is really fun to drive. Um, obviously, the setup really needs dialing in this thing. Especially in these conditions, it just really doesn't want to, like I say, it just doesn't really want to do anything at all. So it's letting these carts through. I was praying that it wasn't going to hit the barrier again just there, but luckily we don't. As we come, like I say, even there, look, I'm trying to brake, um, really tap on the brake to try and get the cart rotated. Getting a nice bit of oversteer there again, trying to like feed it through on the throttle. It's just trying to learn how to rotate this car. I can't seem to do it at all. All these road taxes coming through, I just decided to bring it in. <laughs> oh, that's, it feels like a meme to drive. It's a meme. Yeah, it does did, not turn. Did it's you not turning did, and it's just going, nope. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't turn. Did you enjoy your little trip in the barrier? I got that on video as well. <laughs> I was video when you oh, did it. Turn, I was like, it's not going. Come on, guys, that's the. Uh, that's a couple, a few sessions done. See, the sun's come out a little bit, so the day started off a bit dry. And obviously it's freshly down. Now the sun's actually out, no clouds in the sky. We've also driven the BRM as well, with the 200 or 225 uh, engines on them. But yeah, the cadets are out now at the minute. But yeah, the JCB is a really interesting car to drive. Um, yeah, everyone that seems to be filling it. The JCB is striking. And whoever's driving it is it's hitting it. Even me in the barrier just turned it. Honestly, you turn these conditions, nothing happens. You're just understeering, like no tomorrow. But yeah, the BRM is BRM's a really nice chassis to drive. Uh, really enjoyed the few sessions I've had with it. So I hope we should be getting a few more sessions in that as well. But yeah, it's been a been quite a fun day so far. It's been a meme worthy day with the JCB. But yeah, let's have a few more sessions and yeah, let's uh, get to it. So as we come out then for the penultimate session of the evening, instead of uh, boring you all with some more footage of me just going around, if you haven't been to my house before, especially in the wet, I'm going to be going through a quick guide with you just to be showing you where you should be going, what lines you should be taking. So let's first go through a lap where a nice quick lap then coming down the main straight. We want to try and use the right hand curb there, but don't quite get it this time, but you want to be abusing that curb and then going all the way wide like we are here. Try and straighten out the car as much as you can coming into turn three. Use all the curb like that. Don't use the outside of the truck there, there's a nice big puddle. Now come into hairpin one, use that curb and then use the outside of the track just there. Coming into hairpin two, try and stay in the middle of the track. Don't go on the inside as it's wet. That let the car run wide all the way out wide coming into pylon then really use the curb on the left hand side but don't try and hit that sausage curb and really use all that white curb just there stay in the middle of the track to use the outside of the track here and you really want to be using the inside of curbs on these final two corners but i don't quite get them use all the exit space on the last corner and that is a full lap of right house so let's slow it down a little bit and coming into turn one then i don't do it but you should be using that curb on the right hand side really get over it but then here you let the car run wide because you want to try and get the car as straight as possible then coming into turn three use all the curb like i do and on the dry you would use the outside of the track here because it's where it's a nice big puddle you don't want to use that but then brake nice and early for this hairpin just here hairpin one use that curb use the outside of the track as well to get the min minimum track distance 
hairpin too then like I say stay in the middle because that's where the traction is going to be while minimizing the track distance and then let the car run wide all the way out to the barriers coming into pylon then you want to turn in and get all the curb there try not hit that sausage curb to unbalance the car then you really want to use that white curb just there once again to minimize distance like you're going to be sticking in the middle of the track here but then like i said you really want to be using the inside of these curbs to help rotate the car unfortunately i don't get there but use all the space here on the outside of the track and that is a full lap of right house if you ever come here and you want to give it a go and just before we finish off the video a couple more highlights from the last two sessions the first one here on the final lap we've caught up to this rotax right ahead of us which we have been catching up to the last couple of laps but this is the lap that we finally get round to properly catching it up current hairpin one then look for a little move there coming on the inside but a bit far too back to try to move and luckily they don't manage to get away in the straight so coming up into hairpin two then try to switch back as they're going for the dry line and we go for the bit of a wetter line unfortunately coming to pylon because they have got the road tax they're going to start getting away but do a back off quite early to do actually let his three waivers through but I can officially say that I've overtaken a road tax and a pro car on skill alone and then on the final session then coming up to the last couple of corners unfortunately to get a bit too much rotation coming out the final corner end up spinning the car and just letting these road taxes come through we're probably thinking why is this guy doing on track but you know what you got to test a little bit sometimes but yeah but that was the end of the day so I do want to say a massive massive thank you to ADX for Broton and James for inviting me down inviting me Hannah and Zach down to test the car to try a few setups and yeah like I say if you are interested in driving these yourselves as you know these are the arriving driver carts then I'll leave the uh, information in the description below I'll also leave it a bit later on in the video but yeah please go and make sure you go and visit them um, and go and try it for yourselves and like I say thank you very much to ADX Right guys, that's the uh, end of the day as you can tell, it's, it's nice and dark out there right house. So yeah, I've got a few more sessions in the DRN, uh, it's quite a nice chassis to be fair. Um, it's running the 225 engines, so yeah, a bit quicker than the RPM 200s. But yeah, it does, uh, it does feel like it shifts down the uh, main straight, you obviously can't really fully utilise it all. But yeah, car felt great, uh, engines felt great, um, yeah, it just reminds me how much I like driving in the wet to be fair even though a lot of the time I do drive in carts these days, it's wet. But anyway, thank you very much for the whole team at ADX for inviting me down. And obviously I have Zach and Hannah with us as well. Um, so yeah, for inviting us all down to test the JCB and the BRM out. Yeah, absolutely great day. Um, loved it, a bit wet, but you know, what can you do? So yeah, thank you very much to the ADX team. And obviously if you want to go and, you know, test the Rotax out, test the BRM out, um, I'll leave the details here, obviously the Instagram, send them a message, my website, etc, etc. Go and book on, go and get yourselves into a proper car, especially if you're down the Rye House way. Um, highly recommended. Definitely the best arrive and drive at Rye House you can do. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching guys. Um, yeah, next few videos now will be the Christmas specials. Um, so yeah, hope you're looking forward to that one. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching YouTube. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the Christmas special.